morning and welcome to beginning the day with God on Saturday the 15th of June. We opened our worship this morning with Anne Quigley's song, There is a longing in our heart. So we come to our morning prayers. We come before you, O Lord, as the day begins. As the sun rises, may your hope rise in us. As the birds sing, may your love flow out of us. As the light floods into this new day, may your joy shine through us. We come before you, O Lord, and drink in this moment of peace, that we may carry something of your hope, love and joy today in our hearts. Amen. Amen. Our reading this morning continues the journey through Luke's Gospel and the verses today come from chapter 14. Now large crowds were travelling with Jesus, and he turned and said to them, Whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and even life itself, cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not first sit down and estimate the cost to see whether he has enough to complete it. Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to ridicule him, saying, this fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going out to wage war against another king, will not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to oppose the one who comes against him with 20,000. If he cannot, then while the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for the terms of peace. So therefore, none of you can become my disciple if you do not give up all your possessions. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is fit neither for the soil nor for the manure heap. They throw it away. Let anyone with ears to hear listen. And now this morning's reflection. What difference does it make to be a follower of Jesus? What, if anything, marks us out as distinctive? When we look around, it can be hard to distinguish ourselves from those around us, colleagues, friends, family. We have the same concerns as them, the same worries, the same hang-ups, the same anxieties. The writer of this morning's reflection says that in the early days of their faith journey, they used to be so committed to making a difference. They wanted to be the salt that seasoned every place they entered, every relationship made, everything they came into contact with the flavour of Christ, with the help of the Holy Spirit. I'm not sure I am not alone. I'm sure I'm not alone when I describe the zeal with which I approached my faith, he says and how much I wanted to tell people about it. But if I'm honest, the zeal gave way to the preoccupations of everyday life. Other things got in the way. As the years go by, it can be far too easy for us to lose our saltiness and blend into the background, to be flavoured by the things around us rather than the other way round. In today's passage, Jesus challenges us yet again, warning that the salt will be thrown out if it loses its flavour. So what can we do today to bring the savour of Christ and change the atmosphere around us? Amen.
we now join together in the prayer which Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. This is another day, O Lord, and I know not what it will bring forth, but make me ready for whatever it may be. If I am to stand up, help me to stand bravely. If I am to sit still, help me to sit quietly. If I am to lie low, help me to do it gallantly. May I know you are always with me. Amen. May you, our God, who dances with creation, who plants your likeness in people, and who strikes the world with thunder. Send us out to fill the world with love. Amen. Amen.